couldn't find my specs anywhere. That's why I gotta use this. Ever tried reading through a magnifying glass? It works pretty good, except the words get kinda out of shape around the edges. Say, that reminds me. Ever had anybody look at you through a magnifying glass? That's what happened to our family about a year ago. When somebody... Say, <laughs> why don't I tell you the whole story? One day last fall, late September I think it was, a young fellow, a stranger in our town, came to the library where Emily, <laughs> that's my granddaughter, was working. May I help you? Uh, yes, you can. Are you looking for any particular book? Uh, no, not exactly. I, uh, I want to do some research. On what subject? Well, uh, do you have anything on your fair city and its vicinity? I don't think anybody's ever written anything about Middleburg. I doubt that there's anything here anybody would want to write about. Well, perhaps you're overlooking something. Are you a, a, a novelist? <laughs> no, no, nothing as glamorous as that. No, I, uh, have to do a thesis for my college degree. Oh. Well, just what type of material are you looking for, Mr. Uh, uh, Wainwright. Oh. David Wainwright, Miss... Fisher. Fisher. Uh. Well, except for a few pamphlets on the history well, of the town. Well, that'd be fine for a starter. Could I have those? You certainly may. Will you come this way, please? Yes, thanks. Ready for another book already? Miss Fisher, I've been here ten days, and I've had enough of books and newspapers and pamphlets. You're not all through, are you? Far from it. I'm just coming to the most important part, but uh, what I'm looking for isn't in the library. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I wish I could help you. You can. Uh, Miss Fisher, would you have dinner with me tonight? What? Why, I'd love to. Well, wonderful. <laughs> you know, this library certainly gives service above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you. Uh, but you'll have to name the place. Where can we get a good meal around here? At our house. It's your house. Please don't say no. Oh, but I couldn't think of it. I, I mean, I couldn't think of saying no. Hello? Hello, darling. How are you, my sweet? Mother, where are you? I'm in Chicago. Chicago? That's right. I was tired of New York. And I happen to remember this lovely house party of the Kennedys in Chicago. <laughs> Here I am. And uh, you won't be bored in Chicago? Of course not. Everyone's here. And darling, everyone wants you to join us. Now, you're not very far away, so you simply must come. Oh, but Mother, you know I'm still working on that sociological study about life in a small town. Haven't you finished with that tiresome thing yet? And why must you bury yourself in some pokey, ridiculous little town? Well, pokey it may be, and ridiculous it also may be, but this town is my laboratory. But dear, if you must learn about small towns, why don't you ask me? I was born in one, you know. <laughs> yes, I know, but uh, I can't write about you, can I? Uh, look, Mom, I gotta hang up. I'm due to have dinner in 15 minutes with my guinea pigs. At this hour? It's only quarter to six. Yes, I know. Uncivilized, isn't it? But uh, I've got to get on the good side of these people. I'll tell you what. Take them a box of candy. One of those awful garish things, trimmed with gilt and tied with a big bow. They'll love it. Who will I give it to, the mother or the daughter? Oh, oh. I might have known there was a girl. Not the way you mean. As far as I'm concerned, this girl is just another one of the guinea pigs. Well, call me, dear, and let me know how it turns out. All right. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye. Emily, he's here. Pete, put your coat on. The slip's showing. Oh, no. No, it isn't. isn't anything of the kind, Emily. Go ahead. Hello, come on in. Thank you. Am 
Riley. Not at all. How do you do, Mr. Wainwright? We're so glad to see you. Thank you. I'm Emily's mother, and she's told us so much about you. Oh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate being invited here, Miss Fisher. Dave, this is my father. How do you do, sir? Pleased to meet you, young man. And yes. this is my grandfather. Hello. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Wainwright. Thank and you, sir. this is my brother, Peter. Howdy. How do you do? And this is little Freddie. Well, hello, Freddie. I got two lightning bugs in a bottle. They got lights in their tails. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this is for you, Mrs. Fisher. Oh, how nice. Oh, boy, can I have a piece? Well, we'll all have some after supper. <laughs> Mom, now that the company's here, can we eat? I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, funny. You and I both, Freddie. He's always hungry. When I was his age, I was always hungry. Shall we go in? Oh, but uh, perhaps it's a bit too early for you to eat, Mr. Wainwright. No, Wayne. not at all. I like eating early. Well, then, if everybody will come in and sit down, I'll put some food on the table. I'll help you, Mother. Oh, no, no, dear. I'll manage. Shall we? Emily tells us you're doing some research on Middleburg. Yes, sir. I am. Say, uh, haven't I seen you playing ball over at school? Maybe you have. Now that I think of it, I'm sure I have. Very good ball, too. Hmm? <laughs> Must have been me. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, will you say grace? The eyes of all wait upon thee, O Lord, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. Amen. Uh, what was it you said you were writing about Middleburg? Grandpa, he doesn't like to talk about it. He won't even tell me. <laughs> that road certainly looks good, Mrs. Fisher. Thank you. Our Anna is just about the best cook in the county. <laughs> yes, sir. -ee. Dinner was out of this world, Mrs. Fisher. Never tastes anything like it. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Yes, Mom, it's real good. But Pa makes the best ice cream sodas in his drugstore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Freddie. Now we'll have devotions. Dear, perhaps Mr. Wainwright would rather... No, no, not at all. Uh, please, go right on. Thank you. Now, let's see. We were in the 10th chapter of St. John, where Jesus says, I am the door. Jesus is talking about how the sheep get in and out of the sheepfold. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. We should be grateful that the Savior died, that we might live. Let us give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Yesterday, I spent my first evening studying a typical small-town family. It was quite an experience. <laughs> hey, tell me, Mr. Fisher, uh, how'd you ever happen to go into the drugstore business? Oh, I don't know. Dad started it, I guess I just naturally fell into it. It's a mighty nice business. You meet lots of people and get a chance to help folks. Well, hiya, Freddy. Peter, how about you? What are you going to do when you get out of school? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'll go into the drugstore business, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to be a drugstore man, too, and make the biggest soda anybody ever saw. You well, are. Bunny, I thought you were going to be a deputy sheriff. I'm going to be both. Oh, <laughs> David, uh, tell us, uh, how do you like our town and our people? Why would he be writing about it, Mother, if he didn't like us? You're so right. I'm finding it very interesting and absorbing. Especially now. Interesting and absorbing. Especially now. The study of the customs, conventions, and manner of this family is even more ludicrous than I anticipated. The other night, <laughs> the boy. Oh, you certainly led me into that one. Who's winning? 
<laughs> you know who's winning. Oh. <laughs> I'll be with you in just a minute, Dave. All right. Uh, let me see now. Oh, this is an awful predicament to be in. Mother, David and I are going now. Bye, dear. Bye, Dad. Have a good time, dear. Carl, do you suppose Dave's serious about Emily? Oh, come now, Anna. A boy calls a few times, asks a few questions. Already, you're matchmaking. But there's more to it than that. <laughs> what, for instance? Oh, no one thing in particular. Just a lot of little things. Such as the box of candy he brought me. Well, how he's interested in our family and how he likes small towns. Personally, I do think he's serious. I really do. He is a nice boy, don't you think? Sure. A nice, clean-cut young fellow. <laughs> I have now spent two weeks studying this typical small-town family. By now, I know them thoroughly. I know what they do, what they think, and what they are. are only the first three chapters. I'll keep feeding you more as I edit the rest. When can you get started? Oh, sometime later this afternoon, after I finish this. Oh, fine. And if you have any trouble reading my scribbling, just give me a call at the hotel. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Oh, don't forget, uh, two carbons. Oh, two carbons, yes, sir. All right. It's been such a wonderful evening, Dave. I don't know when I've had such a good time. Penny, for your thoughts. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> well, they're not worth that much. You seem pretty preoccupied. I'm sorry. I know. You're starting to get tired of this small town life. Oh, don't be silly. I love it here. <laughs> oh, Fibber. I can understand it, though. Middleburg must seem awfully dull to a man like you. We do have other things here that you can't find in a big city, though. Well, that's for sure. Say, tell me, Em. What is it you cherish most about Middleburg? Mm, it isn't any one thing in particular, Dave. We, we don't have any millionaires here, but our people are rich, love and affection. We don't have any luxurious mansions. But we do have pleasant homes with warm family ties. It's, well, it's hard to put into words, Dave. It's, well, it's like comparing a, a silk brocade with a wool tweed. A silk brocade with a wool tweed? Uh -huh. One's beautiful and glamorous, but the other's warm and lasting. We do have other things here that you can't find in a big city, though. they might have it more abundantly. We don't have any millionaires here, but our people are rich, love and affection. Library, Emily Fisher speaking. Oh, hello, Agnes. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, how about you and me having lunch together? Well, I've been expecting a call. I simply must see you. What about Agnes? Well, I've got something that I think you ought to see. All right, Agnes. Bye. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. One's 
beautiful and glamorous, but the other is warm and lasting. Hello, operator. Uh, there's a public stenographer around the corner from the hotel. Uh, name's Agnes Hobbs. You think you can reach her for me? Just a minute, sir. I'll have to look up the number in court. Oh, well, never mind. I can get to her quicker than that. Hobbs, I, I must have just missed you. This uh, thesis of mine, uh, how far along are you? Oh, I'm uh, not quite finished with it yet. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. I uh, I wonder if I can have it back. Well, I... Uh... I'd like to uh, make some changes on it. Oh, well, I've been proofreading it in the evenings. It's, um, it's at the house. Oh. Well, I could bring it to you the first thing in the morning to your hotel. Well, please do, without fail. Uh, see you in the morning, then. Yes, see you Bye. in the morning. Bye. But, Emily, what's happened? Please don't ask me. I, I can't tell you. All right, dear, I won't ask any more, but whatever it was, I'm sure David didn't mean it. He did mean it. Every word of it. What word? That's Dave. That's his ring. There now. He's probably come to say he's sorry. I don't want to see him. Now, Emily, that's no way to act. Tell him to go away. Fisher. Hello, David. Come in. Thank you. Uh, Emily here? I went by the library, but they said she'd gone home. Well, she... Yes, David, she's here, but... Look, what's happened between you two? What are you talking about? You don't know? Well, no, I haven't the slightest idea. Don't you, David? Oh, David, excuse me. I have some things to do in the kitchen. Emily, what's this all about? I just had a telephone call from Agnes Hobbs saying you were looking for your thesis. Yes, I was. I... You didn't... Yes. I read your thesis where I'm named A and my mother B and the rest of our family tagged with letters of the alphabet. Emily, please believe me. When I you wrote that, I... You your say in your thesis. Now let me have mine. In this house, we took you at face value. But you didn't do the same for us. What we are, what we're trying to be. You turned and twisted into something completely different. Something awful. Something to be laughed at. But Emily, it was only... Let me quote from your scientific study. We're small citizens in a small town with small horizons. We're a religious family with outmoded beliefs and antiquated customs. I have no other goal beyond getting married. I've accepted the obsolete formula that a woman's place is in the home. Emily, when I wrote that, there was nothing personal in it. Oh, wasn't there? My mother's nothing but a simple-minded drudge. Her interests are pinched and colorless. Will you please my let me... My father is in a rut, and he's satisfied to stay in it. And my brothers are, are doomed to choke in the stuffiness of Middleburg. And my grandfather's nothing but an old crackpot philosopher. Emily, you've got to listen to me. I haven't finished yet. Neither have I. There's something I didn't put in that thesis. And you're going to hear it right now. The whole time I was writing this, I... I was falling in love with you. There's something I didn't put in that thesis. And you're going to hear it right now. The whole time I was writing this, I... I was falling in love with you. You fall in love with me. How could you fall in love with a girl like me? A girl who loves her family and believes in what a family stands for. A girl who reads the Bible and, and believes in what it says. A girl who's content with this way of life. 
I should hate you for what you've done, Dave. But I don't. I just, I just feel sorry for you. With all your wealth, your travels, your money, your education, you've missed the most important things of life. I really feel sorry for you. Will you please listen? Go away, David. Go away and don't come back. darling. I'm on my way to the coast, and I stopped for a surprise. Hello, Mother. Where'd you get that? David, this is priceless. Where'd you get it? Oh, some girl brought it a couple of hours ago. Agnes something or other. Davy, why tear it off? It's terrific. I nearly killed myself laughing. I love the way you wrote about those dreadful people. How do they stand themselves? That girl and her mother, they... What about them? Do you know what they remind me of? I hate to admit it, darling, but they reminded me of my own family. I'm thankful I had sense enough to get out. Just think of it, David. We might have been exactly like them. Yes, we might have been. Exactly like them. Oh, gives me the shivers just to think of it. Does it, Mother? If we had been like them, we might not have had to run away. And to keep on running all our lives. Afraid to look at ourselves. Afraid the emptiness of our lives might catch up with us. Dave. It's true. Now I know why I wrote about the Fishers the way I did. I had to criticize them. I had to despise them to justify my own way of living. What home and family life did I ever have? A dozen houses and no home. Nothing but a futile, empty life. Well, can't you see it, Mother? Our lives have been so terribly empty. We've done nothing but take and never give. But then, maybe we had nothing to give. Or what we had to give, nobody wanted. Oh, it was clever to be a cynic and an agnostic. What was there to believe in anyway? The more abundant life, the good life? We had all the things that money could buy, but peace of mind, inner contentment, Goodness, kindness, love. Why, David, you sound like a soapbox philosopher. Perhaps I'd Maybe you can keep on running away from yourself, Mother, but I can't. Not anymore. I want the kind of things the Fisher family tried to give me. What was it her father read from the Bible that first night? The thief came to steal and to kill and destroy. That's what I did. I came to destroy, as if I could. As if anyone could take away the things God has given them. And would have given you and me, if we'd wanted it. How could I have written those things? How could a man's mind be so warm? David, you act as though you'd done something awful. I did. Because of my so-called intellectualism, I saw Emily's sweetness as weakness. Her mother's kindness as stupidity. Her father's contentment is dullness. And their grandfather's warm heart is the crumbling of a senile mind. Oh, don't you understand, Mother? All the time, theirs was the abundant life. I was the one who was lost. Same as you are, Mother. Can't you see it? Yeah. I can't say you've convinced me, but... perhaps you have got something. Something I should think about sometime. Well, while you're thinking about it, there's something that I can do about it. The living proof that theirs is the life 
the abundant life, the Christian life. <clears throat> well, uh, what do you think? Why, I think it's fine, but... Uh, but... But what, Grandpa? Son, I think you've gone a little bit overboard. This Fisher family you wrote about, they're almost like angels. <laughs> Believe me, we're not. <laughs> Far from it. Well, I think you are. Well, it could be that maybe you're just a little uh, partial. <laughs> <laughs> they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Hello there. This is Emily again. It was very nice of you to invite us in. Could I add just a word before we leave? A word about the kind of life concerning which we members of the Fisher family say, this is the life. The life which our family is seeking to preserve is based on a personal faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. A life blessed with the peace and the joy and assurance which only a faith in Christ the Son of God can give you. We sincerely hope that whoever you are, wherever you are, you will invite the Son of God into your heart and your home. That you will cherish him as your personal redeemer. That you will make his word the Bible a lamp under your feet and a light under your path. For if you will, we're sure that you will find that this is the life. Would you like to know more about the Christian message of pardon and peace through the atonement of the Savior? Write today for This is the Life, a revealing little booklet which deals specifically with the problems of human guilt and divine forgiveness. It tells you how you can get right with God, how you can stay right with God, and how you can lead the richer, fuller life which comes from living at peace with your Maker. This valuable little booklet is yours for the asking. For your free copy, just address a letter or postcard to This is the Life, St. Louis, Missouri. Remember the address. This is the Life, St. Louis, Missouri. This program has been brought to you by the 5,000 congregations of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you are not affiliated with any church, visit the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church in your neighborhood, won't you?